Hello friends. So today's video is going to be a very late January wrap up. I did do a new releases wrap up because I wanted to dedicate an entire video to some of the things that had just recently come out that month, just because I know a lot of times we're really excited. We have anticipated releases, but we're not always able to get around to them. So I like having a dedicated video for that. But then when it comes to a full wrap up, I'm obviously very behind. Beyond that, this is gonna be kind of a strange wrap up because Last year, I mentioned toward the end of the year when the Goodreads nominees were announced for all genres, but specifically with my interests, fantasy, that any book that was not a sequel to something I hadn't started, I wanted to try and pick up. And I did dedicated wrap-ups for a lot of the Goodreads nominees, and there were just a few more that I had needed to get around to. I'm gonna have linked my Goodreads nominee wrap-ups, and then this video is gonna kind of tie that all up. I also did get around to some other things that were not just Goodreads nominees, but before we jump into the wrap up, a big thank you to Book of the Month for working with me on today's video. Book of the Month is an online book subscription service that you have one brand new hardcover that you get to choose out of a selection of options of different genres every month. There's no penalty if you would like to skip any month, you can do that. You can also have add-ons and you can get up to two add-ons each month for a total of three books. The add-ons are great because you you can pull from previous options that they had. And speaking of options, in the past they had five different options and they were all a wide range of both debuts or sometimes they would be returning authors and then also different genres. And because they want to try and ensure that there's always something for everyone, they're actually going to be expanding. So moving forward, you're gonna see anywhere from five to seven picks and this particular month they actually have seven so we'll go through those now. First off we have a thriller called The Book of Cold Cases, a perfect read for every true crime fan who suspected they might just get to the bottom of things better than the pros. After that we have a fantasy called The Cartographers. When her father turns up dead in the New York Public Library, a disgraced map maker has to find her true north ASAP. We also have a literary fiction called The Verifiers, which is also a debut, family drama, dating app woes, and artificial intelligence, oh my, this witty debut novel has something for everyone. Sticking with fiction, but with contemporary fiction, we have the unsinkable Greta James. Take a cruise with your estranged dad, they said. It'll be fun, not at all awkward bonding experience, they said. We also have a romance called Dating Dr. Dill, The Taming of the Shrew Remixed and Remade, Can a Love Adverse TV Doctor and a Hopeless Romantic Spark an Unlikely Romance. We also have a mystery called The Paris Apartment, Sometimes you visit the City of Lights and the vibe is just off. You know what I mean? And then we have a true crime called Tell Me Everything, an unforgettable thrilling look at the life of a private investigator working to uncover evidence for a historic case. If you're looking to check out Book of the Month, I will have everything linked for them down below as well as a coupon code that you can use so you can get your first box for discounted. Getting into the wrap up, I'm gonna start with some DNFs and I'm actually gonna start with a DNF that it's a little bit uh, unexpected. So at the end of 2021, kind of beginning of this year, I was doing wrap up style videos for all of last year. And one of the videos was series that I had started that I planned to continue on with. And one of them would be Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. And I mentioned in the video that I hadn't actually completed the book, but I was enjoying it and I could see myself continuing on with the series. So it's a little funny that I've since DNF that book, but there wasn't anything wrong with it. I didn't dislike it. I was just finding I wasn't really wanting to come back to it. And the way it was set up, it definitely felt like it was laying the foundation for an epic fantasy world while doing so within the YA age range, which you don't see too often. It had a lot of different points of view and there were some twists in it that I was finding really interesting but I just wasn't connecting to any of the characters. And even though the world itself felt rather unique, something about it ultimately also felt familiar at the same time. I think it was the character types that we were seeing. So we have a main character who her mother is a little bit morally gray, has to do with some pirating, we'll say, and the daughter really wants to follow in her mother's footsteps. She really wants to work alongside her mother and her mother's like, this isn't safe for you. And the daughter kind of has this rebellious streak where she really wants to go on her own path. So we have that character who is a little bit at odds with their parental figure. They want to find their own destiny. They also have a little bit of a chosen one feel. And then you have a lot of other characters that it just kind of, it was a great cast of characters, but it felt like characters I had seen 
before. And it could just be because it's young adult. I think that a book like that is great for younger readers because they won't have been introduced to these character types. Or if they have, they're not they're not used to them at this point. And so I can see it being a great entry for younger readers. But having read a lot of fantasy at this point, it's not that the plot is generic. It's just that I've seen it a lot having read a lot of epic fantasy, if that makes sense. So ultimately, it was a DNF, but I wouldn't want to dissuade anyone from picking it up if you do like epic fantasy, but maybe you're a little overwhelmed by some of the really big epic fantasies out there, this might be a really good place to start. Another one that I ended up DNFing, but this is not one that I plan to never pick up again, I actually would like to pick this one up at some point, and that would be The Unbroken. So at the time that I had picked this one up, it was one of those it's not you, it's me situations where, you know how sometimes when you go to pick up a book, you can just sense that you're not in the mood to read that book. And when I picked it up, I could just feel myself drifting as I was reading it and wanting to pick up other things, and it was no fault of the books. The next one would be Lore. So this was, once again, another Goodreads nominee. The plus side to picking up the Goodreads nominees is that I picked up a lot of books I likely wouldn't have picked up otherwise, and I ended up finding some that I really was surprised at how much I enjoyed them, but then there were other ones that I really wasn't all that interested in picking up because I have a pretty good idea of my own reading tastes, and Lore was one of the ones that I was like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna be for me. And I picked it up, I got about 80 pages in, and I actually really liked the main character. So the setup is also really cool. There's so much about it that seemed really cool to me. So you have these gods and goddesses that it turns out are real, and there is a certain period of time where you can kill these gods and goddesses and then take their power for yourself. Our main character clearly has some kind of attachment in her past to this situation, but wants nothing to do with it because they have lost someone or someone's, some people that they were really close to. And so now you're kind of wondering, what's their backstory? What happened? What's going on with them? And when you first are introduced to this character, I'm not gonna lie, for those of you that have seen the show Arcane, the character remind me a little bit of Vi. So I was really into it at first, and I feel a little bad, but as the story progressed, it strangely felt like it was a sequel. Because, <laughs> I'm not trying to poke fun at this, but the character, as you often see with wounded characters that have a mysterious backstory, they've lost someone in their life, or they've lost family members. And this character, I feel like everybody was dead in their past. So there would be, they were, she would reference when she was thinking back on things. She would think about this one person who was a really big influence on her and she didn't want to let them down and she wanted to make them proud. And then she would think about family members that are separate from this other person. And then she would think about this friend that she knew and then that person would show up and then she was like, wait a second, but you were dead. And I was just like, everybody was dead. So like, <laughs> so I, I just felt like I picked up in a sequel. And so when the plot did start moving forward, even though I thought it sounded really cool once I was invested, I ultimately didn't feel connected. And then so when the plot started to pick up, I was like, I don't, Care. Reiterating again, I did do an entire video dedicated to new releases that I had picked up in January. I just want to quickly go over these were Red Palace, Engines of Empire, and Daughter of the Moon Goddess. So this one I did an entire dedicated review for, and hopefully at some point I can do a live show for patrons with a couple of my friends for this one because I absolutely loved it. Daughter of the Moon Goddess, I also did do a patron live show for this one with my friend Jesse. So I quite enjoyed both of these, but Engines of Empire is a new, I just, I need the sequel. I need it, I need it now, but I don't, I don't get it now. <laughs> and then Red Palace is a murder mystery, but it's actually historical fiction murder mystery. So it's not a fantasy and it takes place in Korea. So you get a lot of historical aspects from that time period, as well as just cultural things that play a role in trying to solve this murder. So I thought that was really cool. I haven't really come across a book quite like that, and I know the author has written other stories in that same fashion. Engines of Empire follows this technologically advanced fantasy society. It's an epic fantasy, but you see this one particular family called the Hawkspur family, who is 
partially responsible for innovation. However, the more you get to know about these family members, the more you start to see society for what it is and the people that get left behind and the people that get used. And I, man, I really liked that one. And then Daughter of the Moon Goddess is essentially a, a fairy tale. And I thought it felt quite whimsical. It felt very sweeping. And I don't think if you're somebody who really likes to dive into characters in the time and place they're at, that you'll love this one because you will see a large amount of time passing. The characters in this do have a sort of immortality to them. Our main character is someone whose mother was banished and she is the moon goddess, but she is in isolation. And when she was banished, people didn't know that she had a daughter. And so she's been trying to keep her daughter, our main character's life a secret, but now there's a threat. And so the daughter leaves determined though to help her mother and rescue her mother. So all three of these were quite different from one another. And like I said, if you want more information about these, I'll have those other videos linked. Completely switching gears here for a sec, we have The Secret Life of Groceries. So this is a nonfiction book all about the grocery industry. And I just kind of picked this one up on a whim when I was at a bookstore one day. I was looking for some other nonfiction and I saw this one, I read the synopsis and I thought, that sounds interesting. So I decided to pick it up and I'm so glad I did. But also this is, there's, there's a part, man, there's a section in this that is just absolutely heartbreaking. I almost started crying, of all things, talking about grocery stores. So the author, the way that they structure this book, it almost doesn't feel like it has a structure because they're going over so much involving grocery stores, how we came to have grocery stores in the particular model that we have them as currently, because of course, throughout time, the current model was not possible. This probably seems like the most bizarre, boring thing to some of you, but I swear it's actually really good. So the whole first section of the book is detailing how we came to have grocery stores the way they are and how in a lot of ways it's a positive because you are seeing a lot of hunger and issues with food that have been erased by having this current setup. However, this new setup has its own set of problems. And then we dive into those. One of them, and this was not even the part I was talking about, but this was also very tragic, was looking at the lives of truckers. And obviously it's a really significant part of not just the grocery business, but pretty much all business. And their lives, there's just so many aspects to what the author was able to figure out involving their lives that I had not seen. And I ended up tabbing a part that references another book all about the life of a trucker that I kind of want to check out now. It's just very eye-opening. And you would think this would dive into a lot the food industry itself, the meat industry, those sorts of things. It doesn't actually really get into that as much, I think because the author is aware. We've seen a lot of books and documentaries that go into that. So he spends his time diving into other areas. One thing he did go into in the part that is really hard to read is about how the need, or I should say the desire for certain kinds of food has created really difficult lives for some people. And it's more so toward the end of the book. It was one of the saddest things I've ever read. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it is, I mean, there's not a whole lot else to say, I suppose. It's hard when talking about nonfiction because you're kind of like, this is what it is, read it now. And I guess that's my uh, takeaway. It was, it was fantastic. It starts a little, I don't wanna say dry or boring. It's just, it's not very emotionally gripping initially. It's just kind of like, oh, interesting, that's kind of cool. And then as it progresses, there's a lot to it that, like I said, is very eye-opening, so highly recommend this one. I also ended up picking, getting back into uh, some sci-fi fantasy, uh, the Legend Trilogy. I know there's a fourth one, and I was nervous to look into what the fourth one was about until after I'd finished the first three, because I was worried that the synopsis for the fourth one would spoil these. Now that I have read these first three, I can safely refer to this as a trilogy, with the fourth book being more so like a companion book. But I won't say anything else because because I don't want to end up spoiling any of you for that. But this is a very popular young adult kind of dystopian fantasy series. And I had just 
never picked it up. I had picked up other Marie Lu, Marie Lu books before, and I'd heard a lot of uh, varying opinions about the best series or book by Marie Lu, and I was like, I'm just gonna jump into Legend. And I'm so glad I did. So it is quintessential young adult in that it is so fast paced, the plot moves so fast, the characters are kinda a little bit insta-lovey, but I do think that the author explores that pretty well throughout the trilogy. We kind of dive into that a little bit more, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And I I can't say I'm surprised because I've enjoyed everything else by Marie Lu, and I do think that she defies my expectations in pretty much everything I've read. So she does take very familiar tropes that we've seen pretty often, and then she'll do something that you're like, oh, okay, because you made me think that this was the things I've seen before, she's able to sort of push you in a direction you weren't thinking you were going, which I really like. So if you don't know anything about this series, we follow two main perspectives, Day and June. Day being from a lower class and June being from an upper class. And you follow a United States that has become divided. The exact time period obviously is more so in the future. And both characters are living within the same half of the United States. It's very militaristic. So June's perspective, she's somebody who's been fed the propaganda her whole life. She thinks if you just obey the military that everything is fine. And then Day has sort of seen the truth that it doesn't matter how good you are, how much you try. If you are in this lower caste, there's really no coming out of it. There's also an illness that is going around that typically doesn't affect the upper classes the way it does the lower classes. And there's also a lot of conspiracy theories these two end up being pitted against each other for reasons that I don't want to get into because it would be a little spoilery, but it just moves so incredibly fast. And I gotta say, man, it was entertaining. And I work from home now. I used to travel when I taught private violin lessons. A lot of times I would drive to students' houses. And while I had long commutes, I would listen to audiobooks in the car. And I ended up I was driving to one of my local bookstores to pick up a book, and while I was driving, I was listening to one of the books in the series, and I literally gasped out loud in my car. It was very dramatic. There was a part where I was like, oh, no, and it was, I just kind of missed that feeling because I don't, I still listen to audiobooks, but I don't drive and listen to audiobooks all that much anymore because I don't really drive around very much, but it was just a good time. It was very gripping. It was very fun. Now, if you're looking for something exceptionally mature and really unique, there are aspects to this that I think the world building, that's where the creativity comes through. But it's not probably going to blow your mind if you're looking for something you've never seen the likes of before. One that I don't think I've mentioned at all yet would be Malice, not John Gwyn Malice, a different Malice. <laughs> and this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, but more so from a villainous perspective. And I always enjoy seeing an author's take on a villain origin story, especially when it's a villain that is really, really notable. I thought the world building in this was really fascinating. It was a lot more than I was expecting. We really only follow the main character. You don't have a bunch of other perspectives, but even though they are mistreated, you can already sense something in this person. You can just you can just feel it building up. It reminds me a little bit of the book Heartless where you sort of know, for those of you that have read that one, you know where it's going. But then because you know where it's going, you question like, but wait, is this actually where it's going? Or is the author going to change where it's going? And it plays with your expectations in that fashion, which I liked. I do think that I, there's a love interest element to the story. And I gotta say, <laughs> I get why our main character liked their love interest, but at times I did not understand why the love interest liked them because they were always making assumptions and they were always pushing that person away. They just, they, I, yeah, <laughs> I was just surprised that uh, the other character was so into this character a little bit. I was like, but why? <laughs> uh, which is kind of mean, but they're fictional. They're not real, so it's okay. I can't exactly say I loved the main character. I don't think that you're really supposed to though. It's more of just 
trying to push away the inevitable. And I am going to probably pick up the sequel to this one because it's just a duology. I really don't know. Uh, I don't want to say too much, but I don't know what, what's going to happen to our main character in, in the next one. And I am definitely curious to find out. The last one I picked up would be A Master of Gin. I'll go ahead and insert the cover so that you can see the artwork on it. This is one that reminded me quite a bit of Dresden Files, for those of you that enjoy the feeling of Dresden Files. I think you're gonna like this one quite a bit. The setup is that we follow a woman who, similar to Harry Dresden, she is essentially a detective that works for a very specific branch involving magic and magical beings or magical artifacts. So you can see why that comparison would be there. That's honestly probably where the, uh, the similarities end. While it does have sort of that cheeky, fun feel, I would say the humor is a little bit different. And you have third person, I think with Dresden Files, you have that first person narration that is what gets the story's entertainment. Whereas here, there's sort of a cheekiness in the narration, but it's third person and the interactions between characters and sometimes the very realistic ways that they act or their expressions that are described, that's where you get the entertainment factor. I really liked the setting. That is the thing for me that was probably my absolute favorite element to this book. The setting is early 1900s Cairo, and you're seeing all of these different aspects to that place at that time. Anyway, so I really appreciated all of all of the details that went into crafting the world, and the characters were all, it was, a perfect sort of murder mystery setup within a fantasy because I think a good murder mystery, you have all these these personalities, right? You have all these characters that you're like, wait a sec, is it that person? Is it that person? So the setup is right from the beginning. You have this very strange murder involving something magical. In the rest of the story, you're following our main character who is this detective person trying to solve this big murder. And there's so many elements to it that the author, it can't just be your typical murder mystery. Because of the fantasy elements, the author kind of has to bring you along and introduce these fantastical things. For me, I loved the majority of the book and the ending actually wasn't my favorite, mainly because while the stakes themselves were raised exponentially, I didn't feel like the character's fear of what was happening was really matching the severity. So it felt like a slight disconnect between here is how serious the situation is and here are the characters kind of still joking around a little bit. Like they understand, hey, we can't let this potentially world altering thing happen, except for also here's something silly and snarky. And the silly snarky aspects worked really well for the rest of the book. But then as the stakes were raised, I almost kind of wanted them to not do that as often, but that's not how I think everybody's gonna feel. I think some people are gonna appreciate that it doesn't get very doom and gloom as the story progresses. I could absolutely see this as a really, really fun movie. I'm not a huge movie person, but I think this could be a really fun movie. And I kinda want it to happen. And it, in a strange way, at times, reminded me a little bit of second era Mistborn, because I think there is that almost detective feel in Second Era Mistborn as well. And you have the character, Wayne, who is always derping around. And I actually have a similar complaint about Mistborn Era 2. I'm always like, can Wayne be more serious, please? And I kind of had that feeling in this also. But I wanted to make that comparison in case you've read Era 2 and you love that feeling and that tone, then maybe you would really, really like master of gin. That's it for my very late January wrap up. Let me know if you've read any of these, what your thoughts are on them. Let me know if you're planning on picking any of them up. I will have any relevant links in the description bar down below, as well as for book of the month. A big thank you to them again for working with me on today's video. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.